In this video, we'll be covering how to set up documents for Salesforce for the first time, as well as an overview of setting up your mappings. To get started with Formstack documents for Salesforce, you will need to first install the package in Salesforce. Your first step is going to be logging into your instance of Salesforce and navigating to the App Exchange page by clicking on the App Launcher on the top left, and then select the Visit App Exchange button here on the top right. Once on this page, you're going to do a search for Formstack documents. After you've selected Formstack documents, you can click on the Get It Now option here at the bottom. If you're not signed in while viewing this information, you'll need to sign in as the system administrator for the Salesforce org that you'd like to install Formstack documents on. When going through the installation process, you'll have the option to select if you'd like to install the org in the one that you're currently logged in as, or a sandbox. For this instance, we will be installing in our own org. On the next page, you'll be asked to fill out some information about yourself and the company that's going to be using our application. After we've filled out this information, we need to agree to the terms and conditions, and then click the Confirm and Install button. The next option will ask if you'd like to install Formstack documents for specific users, whether that's admins, all users, or specific profiles. After confirming the users you'd like to install Formstack documents for, we need to approve third-party access, and then we can select Continue to finish the process. Installing the application can take a bit of time, and you'll usually receive a confirmation on the screen if it's been installed or if it needs a bit longer. If the application needs some additional time, you'll receive an email notification once it's been successfully installed. After the package has been installed, you can access Formstack documents by clicking on the waffle icon or app launcher in the top left corner of Salesforce. It could be one of the top apps like you see here, or you may need to do a search for it depending on your setup. After launching it, Formstack documents for Salesforce will give you access to three new tabs. Let's go over these. The new tabs will be Formstack Documents, Formstack Mappings, and Formstack Settings. This is where you'll be able to manage your document mappings and settings for your account. Before you get started with creating documents, you'll need to give Salesforce access to your document templates by clicking on the Formstack Settings tab from here, you will need to set up an API key and API secret with Formstack documents. The next step is going to be logging into your Formstack documents account outside of Salesforce. This can be done by accessing www.formstack.com slash products slash documents. Once logged in, you want to navigate to the top right, like we're doing here, and then go under profile. From here, you'll see an option for API access. On this page, you'll want to choose the new API key button to generate an API key. You'll then want to name your API key and copy and paste the API key and API secret from Formstack documents and then into Formstack documents for Salesforce on the settings page that we had visited earlier in the video. After you've pasted this information, you can go ahead and click on Login, and if everything was entered correctly, you'll be logged in. It's also worth mentioning that the Settings tab is where you will configure the objects you're able to create mappings with. At first, it will only show a few standard objects, but we support generating documents from all standard and custom objects. To add any additional objects, you can select the Add New Object button. After this step has been completed, you'll now have access to managing your Formstack documents. Let's take a look. If you already had documents on your account, you should now be able to see them from the Formstack Documents page, but you can now also create them within Salesforce. Now that we've installed Formstack Documents for Salesforce, let's also take a look at our Mappings tab and go over some best practices to keep in mind when using data from your salesforce.com records. Something worth mentioning while you're going through this process 
is that you should be deciding on if you wish to generate the document through a custom button or by using automation to generate the document. Both of these options will require you to create a mapping. Clicking on the new mapping button to start, you'll have the option to give your mapping a name as well as a description of what this mapping does or what use case it was created for. You can then select the standard object with which you'd like to merge the document, and then you'll have the option to select a Formstack resource, either a document or data route, and then the ability to select the specific document or data route that you'd like to create the mapping for. As a reminder for anyone who's new to our Formstack Documents product, a document would be a single document, while a data route might be several different documents using logic to send your form data where you need it after submission has been completed. For this example, I'm going to select opportunity as our standard object, as we're going to be working with a proposal as our document example. Once you're finished with your selection, you can click save and next to continue on to field mapping. On the field mapping screen, we are presented with a series of optional settings. Below this, we have form stack fields from the documents template on the left that we can map to existing Salesforce fields on the Salesforce object that we had previously selected here on the right. For this example, we're gonna keep our default settings to save this document as an attachment. And then we will select a few Salesforce fields that we'd like to map to here on the right. It's important to note that when you're selecting the Salesforce field that you want to map for each form stack field, you'll have access to fields from the selected Salesforce object, but also fields from other parent records like owner account and child relationships. Another important feature to highlight is the ability to automatically have form stack documents generate a document when specific criteria is met. This can be enabled by toggling this option here at the bottom. When setting this up, you'll have three options to choose from to evaluate the following rules. First option is created. This will evaluate the rule every single time a record is created. If the rule criteria are met, the document will be created. The next option is created and every time it's edited. This will evaluate the rule every single time a record is created and every single time the record is edited. If the rule criteria are met, the document will be created. The last one is created, and any time it's edited to subsequently meet criteria. This option will evaluate the rule every time a record is created, and every time the record is edited and did not previously meet the criteria. After you've made your evaluation criteria, you can choose up to four criteria that must be met in order for the document to be generated automatically. You have access to the fields on the Salesforce object that you selected when creating the form stack mapping, as well as fields from parent objects like owner name or account name. Lastly, you also have the option to toggle this option below that allows you to only show this mapping given the following rule and to set the specific criteria. After setting up your mapping, you can click on the Activate and Save option at the bottom of the page. You also have the option to save your mapping if it's still a work in progress that you'd like to revisit at a later time. Once you activate a mapping, it will be available to your users through the Web Merge button on a record. If your mapping has been configured to automatically generate documents, those rules will now be active as well. Let's take a quick look at the mapping page now that we have this set up. From here, you can navigate to the action column on the right to edit, copy, activate, deactivate, or delete your mapping. Earlier in the video, we mentioned that not only do you have the option to set up criteria for generating documents automatically, but users can also generate documents on demand using the form stack document button on a Salesforce record. The objects currently supported by Formstock documents are account, case, contact, contract, lead, and opportunity. Let's take a quick look at how to add this button and set it up. 
The first step is going to be to load the object in Object Manager, like you can see here. For this, we're going to be using our previous example and using our opportunity as the standard object. And then select the Page Layouts option on the left panel. From here, you'll want to select the dropdown beside the opportunity layout on the right and then choose the edit option. The next step is going to be to click on the mobile and lightning action section near the top, and then you'll see a merge document button. Drag the merge document button into the Salesforce mobile and lightning experience section of the page layout, and then save the page layout, and you will now see the merge document button on the detail record. Repeat this for each of the supported Salesforce objects that you plan on using. That's it for our video on setting up our documents product for Salesforce. Thank you for watching.